If you buy a modern processor today, it has an x86 core inside. From Intel, from AMD, they both use the x86 instruction set, but have different microarchitectures. That's what, that's what gives them the performance difference. Did you know that there are actually more companies that design x86 CPUs? One of them is VIA, there's even a fourth called DM&P, but it's VIA that we're focusing on today. VIA acquired x86 through their acquisition of Centaur Technologies in 1999, and it turns out that Centaur's just kind of been bought by Intel. What's your minimum specification? Well shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per data than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. So there's been a long debate about which instruction set matters. Most desktop chips are x86 based, most smartphone chips are ARM based, and the new up and coming RISC-V is seeing, you know, some exposure into embedded and microcontrollers. And as we've spoken to with, say, uh, Jim Keller, they all seem to think that ISA doesn't really matter, instruction set doesn't really matter, it's just basically what you do with it on the microarchitecture front that counts. So, but x86 does have the market share. Lots of people use x86, so the amount of companies that make x86 chips is important. Now, x86 I'm using as just this broad overall term for what was originally the x86 uh, architecture. We now have 32-bit, 64-bit. We have uh, some patents, patents uh, owned by AMD, by Intel, and even by Centaur Technologies, which we're going to talk about. So if you've heard of VIA or Centaur Technologies, they've been making x86 chips for quite a while. In fact, even recently, uh, I've managed to get hold of one of these. This is a Shaoxin chip designed in collaboration with a Chinese joint venture. Uh, this chip actually came out a few years ago, but they've been doing that sort of thing for a while. And the base design for this chip is actually over 11 years old. But recently, uh, even as far back as a couple of years ago, Centaur Technologies with VIA have been announcing new processors. A recent one, for example, has been their CNS core, or CHA, and the CNS core is a special integrated thing inside that does AVX 32768. Well, we've seen Intel with AVX, AVX2, AVX512. There are reports that AMD is going to support AVX 512 in future. Well, Centaur just went ahead and did AVX 32768. It's insane. We haven't really seen that processor aside from anything in production and demos. And the news today puts a really big question mark on that. So the whole reason why Centaur Technologies and Via's acquisition of them and the fact that they're a third x86 license holder is nothing to do with performance, right? It's whenever we speak about Intel and AMD, it's always performance, performance, performance. Centaur and Via's thing has always been let's offer people a third option, a different option doesn't have to focus on performance, doesn't even have to focus on efficiency. It's just for something that doesn't want to be Intel or AMD. And China's kind of ran with that, with their kind of joint ventures uh, with VIA over the years, VIA being a Taiwanese company anyway. What the announcement this week was, pretty interesting. So VIA is listed on the Taiwanese Stock Exchange, and every quarter they obviously release their financials just like every other company does. Well, as part of their Q3 financials this year, they stated that the Centaur technology team is essentially being purchased by Intel. Except it, purchase isn't really the right word. The way the press release reads, as far as I understand it, and as far as a few other people understand it, Intel is giving $125 million to the Centaur division to what looks essentially to spin it out of VIA. Now, the Centaur team is actually based in Austin, Texas, for what it's worth. And it means that Intel gives Centaur the money, Centaur separates from VIA, and then some of the Centaur engineers go to work for Intel? It That doesn't really... what in, Intel, if they wanted to hire engineers, would be much cheaper than $125 million. VIA and Centaur aren't really comp 
competitors for Intel. So why would Intel even bother picking them up? You know, essentially, why is spinning them out of Via? And then the another argument to this is, well, perhaps uh, Intel, perhaps the U.S. government, if you want to be conspiracy hat type stuff, doesn't want China anywhere near the x86 license. Which, again, is another point of contention in what this news is. So, x86 licensees, there used to be half a dozen, a dozen, back in the 80s and 90s. The idea was that people didn't want to rely just on Intel for their x86 chips. Intel let a bunch of other companies essentially manufacture Intel's own chips on their manufacturing lines in order such that these companies could multiple source which chips. Then eventually... Some of these companies decided to design their own microarchitecture. Some of those got acquired. Some of those dissolved because they weren't competitive enough. But the overriding thing is where the license has been. So Centaur had the license. And when they're acquired by Via, it's not really clear whether the license stayed with Centaur or essentially got absorbed into Via. Because one of the things that people have said back when AMD was kind of at its low point is that nobody could really acquire AMD because if they did, their x86 license isn't transferable to the new company. So the fact that Centaur was purchased by Via, the license kind of stays with Centaur, at least from my understanding. Now, Via also um, acquired Cyrix, who also had an x86 license. But Cyrix kind of dissolved into Via the company. Centaur has kind of remained its own independent thing. It's a wholly owned subsidiary. Of Via, so I'm under the I'm under the impression that the x86 license stays with Centaur. That being said, in a, lo a lot of um, legal issues that Intel and AMD and all the other x86 licensees have had over the last two decades, it's always been uh, explained as Via Technologies with the license. Also, within the past couple of years, with the joint ventures uh, with Xiaoxin uh, in China, the, it sounds like IP and cores have been transferred over to China as part of those deals. Um, I'll throw up a couple of images where I've seen you know, a couple of hundred million um, dollars worth of IP and stuff being transferred over. So the fact that Centaur is being spun out of Via again, essentially, does that mean that the license goes with Centaur or stay with Via? I've spoken to a number of people on this, and they don't seem to know either. Okay, let's take a couple of steps back. And what does this mean? So now we've got Intel, XA, X86 license holder, AMD, X86 license holder, and those two share, you know, cross license, cross patent, everything. Then we've got Centaur Technologies, which may or may not have the license, is now spun out of Via, is its own thing, but some of the engineers have gone to work with Intel. We've got Via, who may or may not still have the license that Centaur had, which means what is the value of Centaur technology if that is a thing? And then another element to all this is, so I've known the Centaur guys on and off for a few years, um, perhaps not as well as I should have. And I'll be honest, a number of them have been in the industry two, three, four decades. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them were close to retirement and this is them kind of cashing out. But then what is the benefit of Intel in all of this? A couple of people I've spoken to have said, if China wanted to create an x86 CPU... They could go the legal way and partner with Via, which is kind of what they've done, or they could just do it themselves. I mean, there is commentary about China not respecting uh, patents, IP, all that jazz. So if they really wanted their own x86 core to not be reliant on the Intels and AMDs, then they could have just gone ahead and done it. And as long as they keep it for sale within China, not a lot of issues probably going to come of that. It's a really confusing mix. So I've reached out to Intel and they've said we confirmed that, you know, there's been an acquisition uh, or at least, you know, a money transfer. All they literally said was, I said, can you confirm this news story? And they said, we can confirm it. More details maybe to follow. Um, I reached out to Centaur or Centaur. I should point out some people call it Centaur. Uh, they said no comment. And they replied and said no comment. Uh, Via just didn't reply. <sighs> not really sure what goes on here. I mean, the impact for general consumers isn't going to be a lot, because Via never really played in the consumer space. A Centaur, of course, never really played in the consumer space. Some small, minor um, set 
top box PC type stuff. I mean, they were speaking about your dual quad core stuff. The Shaoxin one that I've tested, you know, they kind of wanted it to go, I think, um, you know, sort of Core i5 second generation type levels of performance. Um, I'm going to have to bring up my numbers again. And then this new Centaur CNS core was meant to be beyond that. Uh, you know, AVX, AVX2, and then this massive AVX32000 unit. Um, interesting enough, the cores don't have micro cache. They said that would be coming in the next generation. So now all this has happened. Is that next generation even happening? It's unclear. That being said, with Intel and AMD now kind of at each other's throats in the consumer uh, PC space, consumer CPU space, I can't, I want to imagine what it might have been like if we had a proper third player in that mix. Interesting to think about, don't you agree? If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it'll instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.